Barcelona are back to the big game. The win over PSG on the road turned the Catalans into the favorite of the tie and the Champions League in general. Thus, in this video, Vamosito channel will tell you about 5 things that made it possible for Barca to get this crucial victory. Subscribe to our channel and let's get started! The first thing worth noting is Xavi's approach to organizing the game in defense and attack. The broadcasters, as usual, showed us that Barca would play their classic 4-3-3 formation, while in fact, the Catalans did not use it at all. This is no longer new to the Blaugrana fans, but for neutral audiences, this structure may be quite surprising. The fact is that in the attack, Barcelona was switching to a 3-2-4-1 formation. This is a typical Xavi tactic, but it was also perfect for the match against PSG. With the Rafinha Gundogan Lewandowski triangle in the central attacking zone, the Catalans overloaded the Parisian midfield. This was one of the opponent's weaknesses, as none of the midfield trio of Vitinha Ruiz Lee is a defensive minded player. Without a doubt, they are very strong in creating, but often fail defensively. When PSG attacked, Barca defended in a classic 4 4 2. This allowed them to remain compact and also provided a backup against Mbappe and Dembele on the flanks, with Rafinha and Yamal constantly helping Koundé and Cancelo. So, as we can see, Barcelona did not use a 4-3-3 at all and Xavi's system continues to work. Like this video if you appreciate Xavi's flexibility and would like him to stay at Barcelona. Of course, when we talk about Barcelona's victory, we must first mention Rafinha's man of the match performance. The Brazilian played one of his best games in the Barca shirt. He scored the Cotland's first two goals, and in both episodes, he did a superb job. In the episode with the first goal, he chased the team's attack, found free space in the opponent's penalty area, and once he got the ball, he calmly sent it into the net. The second goal was even better. The Brazilian reacted to a pass from midfield and scored a beautiful one-touch goal. It should be noted that in this episode, Rafinha broke into the opponent's penalty area through the center. This is where Chavez's tactical idea with Rafinha as one of the two tens worked once again. By the way, these two goals were the Brazilians' first career Champions League goals. Congratulations! However, Rafinha was named man of the match not only for his goals. In general, his performance was incredible. A huge workload, great offensive actions, opening up between the lines and constantly creating problems for the opponent's defense. In addition to two goals, number 11 had six shots in total, three key passes, two dribbles completed, and two duels won. Wow! Rafinha is exciting. He is really fantastic. If you see how he's pressing, always trying the best, Xavi praised his player after the game. As you can see, the coach emphasizes not goals, but the Brazilians work right. I'm ready and I'm prepared as usual. I'm not gonna hide. Kylian Mbappe said before the match. Well, these aged well. Barcelona completely took Kylian out of the game. And this factor in the victory cannot be underestimated. First of all, the team's right back and right center back, Kunde and Araujo, who worked hardest against Mbappe and backed each other up perfectly, should be praised for this. We can compliment each of them, but let's single out Jules Koundé, who played against Kylian directly for the entire 90 minutes. 5 clearances, 3 recoveries, 7 out of 9 ground duels won, and 2 out of 3 aerial duels won. However, it was not only the defensive line that worked to restrain Kylian, the whole team did. The Frenchman sometimes changed his position on the pitch, but failed to find the weak spot either in the center or in the right side of the attack. The young Kubersi acted perfectly against Mbappe occasionally. This blocked shot alone, which, although it was done by Kylian from the offside position, showed Pau's quality. Pau Kubersi is an incredible player. He's been world class. Guys, it's not normal for a 17 years old to perform like that. I ran out of words to praise him. He competes like an older player. It's just insane. Xavi was extremely pleased after the game. The same goes for Lemin Yamal, who rather failed in terms of his offensive performance, but worked hard in defense. He entered 10 duels, winning 6 of them. Kylian's stats are the best indication of how well Barcelona coped with him. No goals, no assists, no shots on target, 13 times possession lost, 
2 out of 10 duels won, and only 1 out of 4 dribbles completed. Mbappe has a lot to think about before the second leg and the upcoming transfer to Real in general. The way Xavi utilized his options from the band should go down in the history books. Let's not forget that before the game against PSG, De Jong and Pedri hadn't played football for over a month, and Christensen had a minor injury and wasn't 100% ready. To get the result, Xavi had to play this chess game properly. From the first minutes of the match, he started only Frankie De Jong. So, here's the timeline. In the 61st minute, Xavi brings on Pedri, and in the 62nd minute, the Spaniard gives a phenomenal assist to Rafinha for Barca to equalize. In the 75th minute, Xavi replaces De Jong, who gave everything he could, and brings on Christensen. And in the 77th minute, Andres scores the winning goal. That's the impact in the game from the coach. By the way, we should talk about Frankie in particular. The Dutchman played perfectly, giving the long pause before that. Thanks to him, Barca completely controlled the game in the first half. Regulation of the rhythm, high-quality build-up, restraining the opponent – all this was possible because of Frankie. This match showed us another thing. This Barcelona became a very mature team. After the Catalans played a great first half and deservedly won it with a score of 1-0, and then quickly conceded two goals at the start of the second half, not every team would be able to recover from such a blow. Especially when we are talking about an away match against a top club. Especially when it's the Champions League quarterfinals. This is especially impressive when you consider that the key players of this Barcelona are two teenagers. Xavi's team didn't crumble, resisted, and managed to turn the game in their favor. Moreover, if Barca, having equalized, would have locked down in defense and protected the 2 to draw, no one would have blamed the team. Nevertheless, Barca went for the win and got it in a tough away match. After the Kotlan scored a third goal, they gave the opponent no more chances. PSG did not have a single big chance in the last 20 minutes of the game. I hope the ghosts have been buried because we went through very difficult years in the Champions League. This win shows that Barcelona is alive, Xavi summed up after the game. Indeed, for the Catalans, this victory was important not only in terms of sporting results, but also mentally. In the recent years, the team was no longer considered a real contender for the trophy, and the away win against PSG in the Champions League quarterfinals sends a clear message to everyone. We are back. We should also single out Xavi. If you look back at all five listed reasons for Barca's victory, you can clearly see the coach's job in each of them. The setup in defense, the attack, Rafinha's tactical role, Mbappe's containment, substitutions, and the team's constant progress. All of this has resulted in what we have now. Now that the results have improved, everyone says he has to stay. A month ago, they said he had to go. No, this is not how you talk to a coach. Xavi is the same. He was already good before, he is still good. Thierry Henry, who always defended Xavi, shamed critics after the game. And fair enough. Friends, write in the comments your emotions after the PSG vs Barcelona match and whether you believe that Barca really has a chance to win the Champions League after such a performance. This was Vamos Euro Channel. Watch our videos and take care. Bye-bye.